Whoa. What's up, YouTube? This is Greg Ferris with My Brain. I'm not going to say I apologize for my lack of YouTube activity because been for very good reasons, just well, you know, with, with My Brain expanding and, and adding new coaches and having more and more clients and doing seminars. YouTube is not my priority as far as putting up information or sharing my lifts and whatnot, especially now that my prep for USAPL Nationals is over. My training is kind of a little bit more sporadic and it's not as cool to watch, I'm assuming. I'm doing a lot of like high, high repetition stuff. I'm doing a lot of assistance work. So again, it's it's not to me, it wouldn't be as enjoyable to watch. And again, YouTube's like my 78th priority in life right now. Um, but I did want to get out a informative video about a training concept. Again, this will be very, very brief. I'll probably touch upon it later um, in an article or more in-depth video, but kind of want to introduce it to you guys. I don't think it's super complicated. Um, but the training methodology, I've been using it for, I mean, pretty consistently since Nationals is over, which, I mean, that hasn't been that long, maybe three or four weeks. Um, personally, I've been using it. I used it a little bit during my, my prep for Nationals, but that was just kind of here and there. It wasn't very consistent. It was just kind of to test it out and probably not super responsibly. I've also been testing it out with, with my online clients. Um, just a few here and there. People that I know kind of like some some variety and, and are well trained and know how to kind of adapt to something really pretty quickly. Um, I don't really have like a, a cool name for it and I'm certain there's probably an actual, I'm making toast right now. I'm sure there's like an actual name for it, like in a book or someone who invented it or whatever. So again, I'm not trying to uh, coin this as like the myobrain brain method. It's very stupid to try to think that you invented the, reinvented the wheel or something, right? Um, but I'm gonna call it density training because that's how it was brought to me. Um, the idea was brought to me is density training. And it makes sense to me that it's called density training. Uh, so really the idea, you kind of have like three main concepts behind it or three kind of ways that you would implement. Um, so mainly I would do this for assistance work. So again, this would assume you're a power lifter. Um, maybe even a weight lifter or Olympic weight lifter could apply the same principles. So this would be for not squat, bench, deadlift, snatch, clean, and jerk. So it would be overhead press and barbell rows and pull-ups and dumbbell rows and arm work, stuff like that. Assistance work. Um, and the reason why I really, really like it is because when you're when you're doing a session, say you're doing you know back squats, front squats, and then leg curls and abs, like you're not super excited about the leg curls and abs because it's just like you're doing like four by twelve and it's just like whatever, take two minutes rest. It's hard to get up for it. Again, at least personally, I'm assuming other people have the same issue. Um, so density training, I think the main benefit is that it makes the assistance work a little bit more challenging and mainly just more fun. Again, so I really use it for uh, assistance work, accessory work only, but you could use it for the main work too, especially if you're not a, a competitive athlete, if you're just kind of trying to get a little bit stronger with those lifts. So here's kind of the idea. Typically your, your training session would be uh, let's say dumbbell or what I just did today. Say overhead press, you would do a five by five at 75%, right? It's a pretty typical like setup for an assistance exercise like that. So as opposed to doing that, and then say maybe you would go three minutes rest in between those sets. And if you're intelligent or your coach is intelligent, you probably just wouldn't do 75%. You'd have kind of a range there. You would auto-regulate. So based on kind of how you felt, you could go up or down a little bit from that anchor number. So um, so what I did today, you take your, say your eight rep max for overhead press or your estimated eight rep max for overhead press. Um, and you give yourself a time cap. So you have your, your rep max, let's say eight rep max and the time cap, let's go with 10 minutes. Very easy to do that. So you're going to take that, whatever that load is for you, eight rep max load, let's say it's 125, 125 pounds and 12 minutes. Okay and you're trying to accumulate the most amount of reps possible at that eight rep max in that time frame of 10 minutes. So of course the intelligent thing to do would not be to bang out eight reps and go to failure right out of the gate because you're not gonna be able to accumulate as many reps over that 10 minutes. So you may do your first set of seven reps, drop the bar, shake it out, wait wait a minute and a half, hit, hit six reps, shake it out, blah, 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 hit five reps, so on and so forth. And hopefully, again, 
uh, you'd be able to accumulate, say maybe 30, 35, 40 reps in that 10 minutes. So again, it's, it's not super different than if you were just to do, uh, take an eight rep max load and do a four by six, right? It might turn into something like that with the last set being the hardest one because you're kind of pushing closer to failure. But to me, it's just more fun to have a time cap limit and to kind of think of it as a total reps done at that load as opposed to a five by five or a five by eight or whatever you're doing. Physiologically, I don't think it's different. So I, I don't want to think it's like a better th way to do your assistance work. I think it's better mentally for me personally to do it that way because I can get excited about it and I'm probably going to train harder. Because again, when I'm done with squat bench deadlift, I don't have a, a ton of energy and certainly not a ton of energy mentally to do a lot of assistance work. And when I'm in prep mode, I don't really do a lot of assistance work, but I think this can be used for an off season kind of a phase where a bigger portion of my training is the accessory stuff and I get more specific as you get closer to a meet. So that's how you really do it. Say eight rep max with a, with a load or just an estimated, like today I did a, a 20 rep estimated one rep max of a pin lay row. Never done a 20 rep max. I don't really care what it is. I just said like, I could probably do 105 for 20 if I wanted to. So I picked that as my load. I think I did 10 minutes. So I just had 105. I bust out like 12. I started the clock at zero. Busted out 12, dropped it hung out, when I felt kind of ready to go, maybe two minutes in, bust out 13, and then again, maybe that last set, I do it at nine minutes and 30 seconds, and I pretty much just go AMRAP for that. I'm almost going to failure, but again, if I go to failure at that last set, we have already done 45 reps, and then I push to 60, 65, and I'm toast. That's a lot better than starting out of the gate, doing a 20 rep max, and it's gonna be very hard to accumulate the next 40 reps. You've already kind of hit failure, and, and physiologically, it's not gonna be easy to recover from that. Uh, so again, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Not too complicated. And also, what I really like it too, is that the progression week to week is super easy. So, for example, I started, this is my third week of doing it with overhead press. Um, the first week, I took 115 in 12 minutes, and did 29 reps. So again, I didn't do any overhead press for probably four or five months. It was not very strong for me. I'm not typically very strong at it either. Um, so again, that was my anchor. I did 12, a 12 minute AM wrap at 115. I ended up doing 29 reps, okay? So the next week I came back, was not gonna increase the load, was not gonna change the time. I was just gonna try to do that same weight in that same time bracket, but now more reps. So that's why you kind of hear the, the idea density training. You're trying to make that 12 minutes have more work in it over time. So if I did 29 reps in 12 minutes in week one and 38 reps in, uh, in 12 minutes in week two, I did more work in that given amount of time, if that makes sense. Because of course I could have done more repetitions if I would have had a, a bigger, um, another set or a bigger timetable. So then you don't really know if you're getting better or not. Maybe you're just taking you no know, longer rest periods in between your sets. This is very easy. I did the same exact uh, time window. So I know I had to get better, probably the motor pattern a lot if it's nine repetitions. Um, but again, that's an easy way to do it. Again, you can do that for a decent amount of time. Of course, you're not gonna always be able to do more reps pretty literally. Um, and again, this isn't like a foolproof plan of mine yet. It's kind of an idea I wanted to pitch out there. I'm sure someone will steal it and make an article and claim that it's their idea. Um, but so this is that's what this is what I did. That, that week one stuck with the same weight and time, and then to try to add reps to it. And then for week three, I left the time the same, still 12 minutes, but increased the load 10 pounds. And then again, get kind of tricky here. But if you're staying with me, stay with me. So I went from one, uh, hopefully I said that right, 115 in week one and two. And then on week three, I went 125. Still at that 12 minutes. So now my goal, I'm comparing week one to week three. So my goal was, again, week one, I hit 115 for 29 reps total in 12 minutes. Now week three, I'm trying to hit at least 29 reps, hopefully more, but now at 10 more pounds, right? So if you've done like very basic linear periodization, we're just adding five pounds of the bar every session, it's very similar. You're just trying to add repetitions for a week and then add load and at least mass repetitions from week one. 
And by no means is that the only way you can do it. You could do adding reps for four weeks and then add 10 pounds and then try to add reps for four weeks or something even more complicated. That's just the way I wanted to do it today. And I think it's probably a very easy way to do that. Um, add repetitions, add load, and then once that stalls out, add repetitions and so on and so forth. So you're kind of just doing, um, th this is also an idea I've done with some physique athletes, just call it uh, ARAW, which just stands for add reps, add weight, which is essentially what I tried to do when I first started lifting weights was if you're doing three sets of eight to 12, and I'm doing dumbbell benches at 70 pounds. I do it for eights. I keep doing the 70 so I can reach 12. And once I reach 12, I go up to 75 and start at eights again. And I work up to 12. And once I can do 75 for 12, I go up to 80s, right? Very simple concept um, applied to density training. Um, and again, you can do this for bigger compound movements. Um, but I like to do it for overhead press, rows, Pull-ups is another great one. I think pull-ups is actually how I started to do it. That's a very easy way to do it. And uh, pull-ups can be very boring just doing like five sets of 10. So it gives me, a, again, mentally gives you a good challenge because you have this time clock. It's kind of like CrossFit. Um, you have this time clock of eight minutes. Um, and don't get me wrong, my, my technique is very, very solid throughout the entire time. I may actually just record be boring to watch, but I may just record 12 straight minutes um, and let you guys see kind of where my rest periods are between sets and how I feel it out. By no means is it like a ball to the wall 12 minutes as hard as I possibly can kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Density training. I'll probably talk about it uh, in an article or another video. If you want to give it a shot, go ahead and do it. There's probably some articles about it too. I, I mean, I haven't really heard anybody else talk about it, but I'm sure it's nothing revolutionary. Um, it customer also kind of reminds me of dog crap training or rest pause in a similar kind of fashion. Typically that's with a heavier load though. They're doing like four repetitions and waiting 20 seconds and then doing two repetitions. And this is for a little bit higher, high repetition work. Again, the idea of density training. Um, so that's, that's the idea guys. So 12 minutes, super long video. Brand new iPhone uh, 6S, right? So hopefully this video quality is pretty dope. Um, put this up. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, go check out the website as always, myobrainperformance.com. Read the article, sign up for the newsletter, Facebook, all that stuff. See you guys.